playing the Radical Latino Show. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands in the air for New York's very own. Latino is taking you to another level. What's poppin', my people? Welcome back to another episode of the Radical Latino Show. It's your host, the Radical Latino. What's poppin'? I'm back at Goya Bean Studios. You feel what I'm saying? Right behind the Mexican ladies putting in the, the adobo inside the, the can and all that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm back. I got my boy up in the engineering booth. You know what I'm saying? Doing his thing, doing his thing and all that. But um, what's going on? How y'all week been, man? How is everything? My week has been hectic, all over the place. Had a bunch of interesting conversations that I want to even that I want to talk to you guys about. But this week has been all over the place. Jesus Christ! You feel what I'm saying? A lot of things happen. A lot of things I want to talk about, and a lot of interesting things that are coming up. And you guys just gotta stay. Stay in tune. You know, I got a, a lot of uh, interviews uh, coming up that I'm planning on doing. Um, also, let me just say really quickly, um, I am. I'm just give you guys a little sneak peek. You know what I'm saying? A little sneak peek. Uh, I got an interview planned, or actually lined up, to talk to a former neo-Nazi. Me and, and some, you know, I just found this dude on Twitter or whatever the case is. Check the guy out. He's legit, you know, and me and him talked a little bit. And, you know, he's uh, he's comfortable to come into the show and talk or whatever the case is. Um, some other things I got to iron out before that even happens. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? Hopefully that, that follows through and that comes through. You know what I'm saying? Um, very interesting conversation if you ask me, you know, also, um, other things that I'm planning on doing. So you guys just got to, um, stay tuned. Also, if you guys have not checked out my YouTube channel, go check out my YouTube channel, the radical Latino, go there. I make, uh, videos and, you know, just to go in depth in certain things that I don't talk about on the podcast. or if I do mention I'm not gonna mention it in great details and all that other stuff. So go to my YouTube channel, you'll see everything and all that, all the other videos I've been, you know, doing and all that shit, right? So, um, what else? What else I gotta say? What else I gotta say? Oh yeah, also go to my Instagram and my Twitter and all that, you know. Uh, subscribe, follow me. Uh, I got I gotta start being more interactive on, on both of them. I, I, I give little, you know, tidbits here and there, but, you know, I got to be more interactive. I know I'm a lot interactive on my Instagram and on Twitter. I usually just, I just go there just to debate. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Like I go there just to debate and basically, you know, sharpen my debate sword. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I can have some, some good ammo, but when I actually have these on air debates, you feel what I'm saying? So. Go to my Twitter, my Instagram, follow me there. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people download are downloading my episodes. My episodes has jumped from uh, damn near uh, like 80 something, 80 something a download to 130 a download. So shout out to you guys. Shout out to all the listeners. Shout out to the YouTube family. If you not guys, I ain't downloading this. You watching, you know, hearing it on YouTube. Shout out to you guys. Also, shout out to to the podcast family. Um, also, shout out to all the people listening to this on the commute home and all that. Cause you know, I record around Friday or Saturday, and I drop episodes Monday morning. You know, Sunday night. You know, Sunday night to like early, early Monday morning. So shout out to all you guys, shout out to everybody, you know, listening to, you know, what I got to say again, if you guys agree and want to have a conversation, remember the details of the voicemail number is on the details of the podcast and on YouTube. 
I'm telling you, you guys cannot miss that. All right. So if you guys want to have your voices heard, you know what I'm saying? Um, just call up, leave a voicemail. Any questions you guys want to ask, I'm here. I don't mind talking about it. I don't mind putting you guys on on game or putting you guys on the air just to just to talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. All right. Couple of couple of things. Um, before. I start the segment. Um, I was having an extremely, extremely interesting conversation with. Um, well, he's not really a coworker. He's he's an employee. You know what I'm saying? He's an employee. Um, he I I don't work for him. He don't work for me, or whatever the case is. But he's an employee. Um, but I had an extremely com- good very interesting conversation um this guy's a asian fellow you know the chinese dude or whatever the case is and you know i'm just just hanging out just relaxing you know what i'm saying and this dude just uh you know he was like hey what's up man what's going on i was like oh what's popping baby you know what's up you know like you know we we dap each other up and you know and he's like, yo, I went to see my kid today. I was like, oh, shout out to you. I, you. I didn't know you had a kid. You had a kid? Yeah, I got a kid. This is my third one. And I'm like, oh, congratulations to the, you know, the new addition, the beautiful family and stuff. Um, you and your wife are uh, together. Like, he was like, nah, I got three kids by three different women. I'm like, what? What? You got, you got three kids by three different women? Yeah, man, I got three kids by three different women. My first one was in high school. You know what I'm saying? The second one was uh, three years ago, and my recent one was a year ago. I'm like, well, God, dude, what the... F- d- damn, bro, what the fuck? What happened? Like, what, what's going on? So, you know, he told me some bullshit story. Like, you know, like, the first one, uh, she, she, did, she was just revengeful or whatever the case is. The second one he was revengeful or whatever the case is and the third one it was a whatever 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 and she still decided to keep it or whatever the case is right mind you i'm just hearing his side you know what i'm saying and then i was like so i just asked him i just asked him, i'm like all three of them are asian because you know the asian culture they, they don't play with that bullshit you know what i mean you get pregnant you get but like nah one of them are asian is the third one and i'm like really i'm like wait 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 so What's going on with the with the other two? They were like, oh, they were white. And I'm like, oh, word? I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, all right. I'm like, damn, white women are really out here getting pregnant by Asian dudes. And like, they, they, they cool with that? I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> and I told her, I was like, yeah, that's kind of weird. Like, you know, an Asian chick is not just going to like let you leave and all that she's gonna want to wife you up and all you know what i mean like you're gonna have to wife her up and so he was like yeah she wants that and all that i'm like yeah that's kind of weird i was like damn two white girls let you let you uh shoot up the club and then cool with that he was like yeah yeah you know i'm like damn you really like white women and he's like yeah i prefer white women and i'm like oh shit so my one rule is don't talk about any politics or anything, um, you know, racial, racial, have my racial views, even don't talk about none of that, either in the workplace, outside or people associated to the work. Never, ever, 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 ever. What I do, I go into question mode. So this is how I did it. I said, oh, for real? I was like, oh, okay. So, so what, so what are your, your preferences? Like, What's your preferences? Oh, them chick gotta be like looking like a model, you know, not taller than me, like same height or shorter and all that and gotta be, you know, thin. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, so you date obviously Asian and white girls. All right, what about black girls? You date black girls? He's like, hell no. I'm like, damn, what the fuck? Well, why the hell no? Well, you don't like black girls? He's always, this is where he goes. Nah, this is just my preference. I'm like, wait a minute, it's just your preference. No, but you said hell no. What's your preference about it? He's like, no, nah, just black girls are fat. I'm like, nah, that's not true. There's some fine looking black girls out here. What you talking about? There's some fire looking f- uh, black girls out here. He's like, nah, only the ones that I've seen. I'm like, my man, I don't know where you're looking at, 
but I've seen a bunch of fire looking black girls. I don't know what you're talking about. And I started to see like his little racism come up. And that's when he said, if I bring a black girl home, my parents will kill me. And I told him, I was like, yeah, that's pretty funny. You got three girls pregnant. They don't give a fuck about that. But you bring a black girl home, they'll kill you. And he started laughing. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds really crazy, don't you think? And he was like, yeah, well, you know. I'm like, yeah, all right, you know, it is what it is. I'm like, what about Latin girls? He's like, oh, well, it's a 50-50. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, and I quote, she has to be light enough. I'm like, oh, now we get to it. It has nothing to do with looks. It has nothing to do with weight. It has nothing to do with nothing. It has to do with skin color. He was like, well, yeah, a, a, a little bit. I'm like, not a little bit. A lot because you're talking about Latin girls and now it depends on the skin color. So it has nothing to do with anything else. It has to do with skin color. You feel what I'm saying? And I was like, oh, I see how it is. All right, cool. And he was, and then he kept on going, nah, it's just preference. It's just preference. It's just preference. I'm like, yeah, yeah, nah, it's preference. It's all good. Don't worry about it. I don't give a fuck. It's just preference. And he, he started like, yeah, yeah, it's just preference. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's just preference. Fuck out of here. You feel what I'm saying? Like I peeped that shit dumb quick. So that's what I do. I just go into question mode. You feel what I'm saying? I just go into question mode, question mode, question mode. I don't really talk shit about anything in the workplace, out the workplace, people associating the work. I don't talk none of that shit. And mind you, he's in no position to even like snitch on me or anything because I, I'm not in that job. You know what I'm saying? I'm in a position where I associate with a lot of people around jobs. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know. I was given that luxury where I could do that. Associate with a lot of people around jobs, you know what I mean? Everybody knows me or whatever the case is. And then I do what I gotta do and break out, you know, just like a location type of base. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, damn, bro, that, that's crazy. You feel what I'm saying? So that, that gave me a lot of like insights per perspective on uh, just how the culture of the Asian culture, the Asian culture of, uh, of things. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a personal story. Um, uh, mind you, um, I never dated at all an uh, Asian person at all, right? Until I actually went to high school. <laughs> Until I went to high school. When I went to high school, I was like, all right, you know, a, a good friend of mine, me and her were good friends for years or whatever the case is. She decided to just say, hey, you look good. I'm like, shit you look good all right cool we hooked up had a relationship for a year and a half mind you this is in high school all right so like i have a lot my last year of high school and all that you know what i'm saying so i was with her for a year and a half or whatever the case asian chick you know what i mean asian girl first time ever dating an asian that that's it because my, my the majority of the people i dated were lat uh, latinas and black girls that's it you know what i'm saying that's it I only dated one Asian girl and one white girl, and that's it. Outside of that, I'm good because I had bad experiences. From those two, got bad experiences, I'm good. I'd rather stay with my own people from the people that I'm comfortable with. You know what I'm saying? So I dated an Asian girl, right? Me and her were cool. Everything was cool. She introduced me to her friends, mind you. Her friends are a little, you know, like, you know, the Asian people, you know, <laughs> you know, shy and all that. They're not really that open or whatever. They're, they're you know, conservative, you know what I'm saying? But it came when I met her parents. This is where the issue came. When I met her parents, her parents automatically assumed I either sold drugs, I was in a gang, I had four or five girls pregnant, I, uh, I'm not going to school, mind you, I'm graduating high school. You feel what I'm saying? I'm graduating high school with all A's. You know what I'm saying? I'm passing my state tests like, like with flying colors. But yet, I'm not graduating high school. They actually thought that I was encouraging her daughter to drop out. And all of this was just based on me being Latino and them just looking at me one time. You know what I'm saying? And they associated me and black people as the same. And mind you, I'm in high school. Just seeing this at an early young age, I'm like, damn. Holy shit, we're, there's, no, there's no difference to the to black and latin people the way we're treated with um systematic white supremacy there's no difference in this shit 
there's no difference whatsoever. You know, historical differences, obviously. But we're not going to get into that. I'm talking about now. There's no difference. Oh, my God. God damn. All right. And the thing is, when, you know, her parents just hated me. You know what I'm saying? Just hated me, hated me, hated me. And, I, and I, you know, I felt that hatred or whatever. And sometimes it will come out when me and her will have a fight. You know what I'm saying? Mind you, I'm in high school. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't really, like, wasn't really privy to all this, like, you know, knowledge or whatever the case is. So I'm like, yo, why the fuck is she repeating the same shit that her parents will say, you know, say about me? You know, low life and all this other stuff. I'm like, damn. I'm like, I know she pissed off, but shit, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? But that was her own internal racism coming out. Regardless if me and her were sleeping together and all that other bullshit, that was her internal racism coming out. You know what I'm saying? Looking it back now, now I could, like, break it down. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, got shit. All right. Nah, all right, so you know, we may have uh, ended up breaking up or whatever the case is, but that goes to show that that racism isn't just exclusive to you know the black community if a bunch of Latin people or Latinos think that it is. You know what I'm saying? That's not exclusive to the black community. Anybody with melanin, anybody who's a victim of white supremacy, anybody who is subjugated to that point that you guys are at the bottom of the totem pole and mind you in the racial hierarchy thing uh latin people are just one bracket above you feel what i'm saying but anyway anybody who's at the bottom 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 they're going to be shitted on you know what i'm saying and according to her parents black and latin people are the worst ones it's over it's got to the point where they you know they kicked out of the house and all this other bullshit. but anyway i'm not even going to get into that but the whole point is that's some shit I experienced. I'm like, God damn, this shit runs deep. You feel what I'm saying? So that was a you know a little little story time with Rag. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's a little story time and all that. Um, but the first thing I really want to talk about is the Jussie Smollett um situation. You know what I'm saying? My dude is. Actually, my man got indicted on 16 felony counts by a grand jury. Do you guys understand how crazy that is? He got indicted on 16 felony counts. It says right here, Smollett was charged last month with felony disorderly conduct for allegedly false report he made in the Chicago police in January. Holy shit. Wow, all that, you know, minority, gay, LGBTQ shit, that shit went out the window with this one. All that intersectionality bullshit, that shit went out the window with this one. Wow, they're charging him with felony accounts for uh, basically, you know, falsing of a fake police report. That's insane. Oh my God. Um, can you show us any other example of white people i don't know making fa uh, false police reports blaming a mythical black person that harmed them oh yes we do let's start with the most famous example was it i believe carolyn something where she uh emma till the, the, the woman who, who blamed emma till whoever or whoever knows about that case she said, that white woman said, yes, he, he whistled at me. A big mob riled up, got Emmett Till, beat him up to the point where he died. And then years later, mind you, woman still walking around free. And that, and that because of that death, that sparked the civil rights movement. Woman still walking around free. And while she's on in her 90s, she actually came out saying that, yeah, that, that whole thing was a lie. That woman lied to spark the civil rights movement and nothing happened to her. Somebody's life was taken away. Nothing happened to her. Do we have more examples? Of course we do. Of course we got more examples. There was this other white woman 
that I think basically broke into a church or she came into a church or whatever, all bloodied up and said, yeah, uh, a pack of black guys raped me and kidnapped me and all this other bullshit. Guess what? She got a slap on the wrist. I believe she didn't even go to jail for that one. She didn't even go to jail for that one. Everybody started getting all angry and started looking for mythical black people. Didn't go to jail for that one. Do we got more proof? Yes, we do. Casey Anthony. In the initial reports, Casey Anthony said that, oh yeah, it wasn't my babysitter that kidnapped her. It was actually, we got robbed, um, actually carjacked. We got carjacked by two black guys. Yeah, by two black guys. And then we're looking for some black guys that carjacked her. Guess what? Nowhere to be found. You feel what I'm saying? So these these white people, they make false police reports day in and day out. Oh, not even. Let's look at the whole past year. The barbecue Becky girl. False police report. The, the water permit, a permanent patty, false police report. Apartment Becky, false police report. The bodega or, or corner store, whatever. The, the You know what I'm saying? That's it's saying that little kid breast against my ass and all that and the cops came, false police report. No, none of them are getting going to jail for that. They're actually, they're actually getting, you know, apologized to by the own, by the victims. The victims are apologizing. You feel what I'm saying? But none of them are getting, you know, none of them are going to jail. None of them are, are, are getting fined. None of them are actually going to trial. A grand jury secretly are getting together. Let's start finding these, uh, these, these people for, you know, alleging something happened when it didn't happen. None of that shit happened. None of that, that shit is happening. But for some reason, hmm, a black person says, hey, let me see if I could probably pull this off. Guess what? He's finding out the hard way. No, you cannot. You live in a system of white supremacy. You live in a system that is built to subjugate you. You are in a system where the same rules do not apply to you. So no, you can't do what others do. Regardless if you're gay, regardless if you're transgender, regardless if you identify as an alien, regardless if you don't even say that, that you're a human being, you're, you're subhuman, you're somewhere else. You're, you're not even in, from this planet. Regardless of that fact, you are still in a system of white supremacy. And because you're in a system of white supremacy, I dictate what happens and how you get justice. Huh, ain't that some shit? The system of white supremacy is dictating how you get justice and is dictating how the justice is being handled towards you. How, that's some deep, that's some cold shit, isn't it? That's some cold shit. White people around here, left and right, calling the police, nothing happens. Black guy does it once, 16 felony charges. Holy shit. Oh my God. But this is the, the bitter pill we have to swallow. We are running around here as a community thinking that, especially Latin people, thinking that we're white. Thinking that we're white. Trump, from the beginning, he's giving us that wake up call. You feel what I'm saying? There's small stories coming out where Latin people are, are being treated even, you know, the same, the same way as black people were being treated when Obama was in office. You know what I mean? A border agent shot um, a, 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 a Latina elderly woman because she didn't have her green cards. Another border agent harassing two women because they're speaking Spanish. Then that lawyer, a, a lawyer in New York, harassing two uh, two women because they're speaking Spanish. You feel what I'm saying? So we already we already seeing the effects. First of all, my Latin people, y'all gotta wake up. You guys are not white, regardless if you're lightly brown, lightly tan, 
you are not white. White people know who's white. And miss me with all that, well, Latin people get a pass for being white. Keyword, pass. Keyword, pass. It's up to the white person to give a pass. The whole point, if the white person is giving a pass, that means that person that's getting the pass is not white. Regardless if they're being considered white, they're being considered white for one person, not the whole community. The same way how white people say, well, my friend is black and he told me I could say the N-word. Guess what? Everybody didn't get the memo. You feel what I'm saying? So, my Latin people, let's stop getting away from that white shit. I'm telling you right now, let's stop getting away from that white shit. We are not white. Well, our people are not white. Our ancestors are not white. The only reason why some of us are even white is because our ancestors got raped. Let's, let's keep it funky. That's the only reason, but anyway. So that's my that's my point. That's crazy. Now Jesse's out here, you know, getting 16 counts of felony charges and all that, and he's trying to get lawyer up and all that other shit. That I'm telling you, the system of white supremacy tells you who you are extremely quick. Feel what I'm saying? Extremely quick. You know? Now going to R. Kelly. Holy shit. My God. Going to R. Kelly. Listen, I wasn't really going to talk about it because I made a YouTube video about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, uh, I broke down the interview he had with Gail. Gail King. I broke that interview down. You guys could go to my YouTube channel and check it out. I broke that interview down. Mind you, Previously, I said, listen, he did whatever he did. I don't know. I need more evidence. I'm not too convinced because when he went to trial, the the girl said that that wasn't even her. So I don't even know. You know what I'm saying? There's too many, there's too many red flags. I don't know. I, I'm not convinced. Um... That was, that was then. Then, you know, the documentary came out. I'm like, ah, eh, a lot of things. All right. We already know nothing new came out. Some, some new stuff that I didn't know about. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, eh, eh, all right, whatever. But then this interview with Gail King, King came out. I think I'm like, Huh, okay, let me let me watch the interview. So I went and watched it and I'm telling you guys right now I stopped all doubt. I stopped everything and I was like holy shit This guy did it. That's it. It's over. This guy fucking did it. The reason why I say this guy did it is first of all one he acts he acted like me when I got caught in a lie when my girlfriend asked me where the fuck I've been at at three o'clock in the morning, how come I didn't come home at 12 when I said I was going to come home? My man acted like that. <laughs> it was a body. There's a lot of body language that was uh, said that he did that I was like, ah, that's kind of looking a little shaky there, buddy. Like when Gail said, have you ever had um, dated or had sex or whatever she said with a 17 year old girl or minor or whatever? He said no, but his head started shaking. Yes, body language right there. You know, whenever a, a, a liar lies or whatever the case is, there's a couple of body language clues that come off. And when those body language clues are some um, head nods, eyes to the side you know arms you know cross being closed off or whatever the case is but their their head now is a big giveaway when you're saying a negative but your your head is response is responding to a positive automatically right there you caught them you caught them you know what i'm saying you caught them right there um also he does it again a couple of seconds later when she said, are all these people lying on you? He said, absolutely. While shaking his head, no, come on, come on. That right there are two big indicators where I said, that's it. 
it's over. And then when he started deflecting, when she started asking him direct questions, he started deflecting. He did an outburst out of fucking nowhere. And then this dude just goes like, oh, fuck this. You know, this is y'all, y'all killing me with this and all this other stuff. Come on. Come on. Every man has been through that. Come on. When, you know, get out of here. I, I did a whole video on that. You guys can go check that out. But from then, I said, no, nah, it's over. But what I found extremely interesting, what I find extremely interesting, rather, is the fact that none of these white men that were accused by the Me Too movement are being, you know, are being attacked the same way Cosby was attacked. R. Kelly is uh, is being attacked. Even shit, they almost try to get Chris Brown right now. You know what I'm saying? Nobody. They're not doing nobody. There's no documentary of surviving, uh, um, H uh, Harvey Weinstein. There's no documentary on you know, on Louis C.K. There's no documentary on this dude that was giving a chicks AIDS. What's that dude's name? Uh, Charlie Sheen. You know what I'm saying? Like that. There's no, there's no documentary on that. There's no movement on that. There's no mute this and cancel that. There's nothing that, but when it comes to somebody black, oh, people are very quick, extremely quick to go point the finger and try to actually get them out the paint for that. Oh, when it's someone black, oh shit. We got the court date. The officer who arrested you, we already know when it's gonna happen, how it's gonna happen, and where it's gonna happen. You feel what I'm saying? But when someone white, ah, uh, we gotta, we gotta get more evidence. Yeah, we gotta get more evidence. Well, you know what? The jail's full. The jail's full. You can't just, no, we can't get you. The jail's full. We can't just arrest you and just put you in there. It's too full. We'll let you know when it clears out. Oh no, there's too many court dates. You know what? Let's postpone it for five years. Yeah, just go live your life. Don't worry about it. You know, when someone's white, everything else happens. You know, for some reason, nah, we can't do. Sh when we, when the shit happens to us, oh hell, the jail's full. Motherfucker, you're gonna be inside a fucking kitchen. You better work your ass up in there. And that's where you stay. Full my ass. You better make room. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to us, court date, well, we're going to keep you in jail with no bail until your court um court date um happens. When we ain't going we know we don't know, we're backed up. Oh well, it could be 2, 5, 10 years. We don't know. You feel what I'm saying when it comes to us? Oh nah, we're not no 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 no, we're not going to give you a fine. No, no, no. We, we listen, we don't care if this happened to another white person. We're not going to fine you. No, 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 no. We're going to arrest your ass, fingerprint you, get you through the system, process you. You're going to go to the, you know, different floors, even different precincts and stuff. You're still going to be detained. Mind you, you're still going to be detained. You know what I mean? Shit works really different when it comes to white people and us. You feel what I'm saying? Shit works really different, you know? But that's the, that's the interesting thing that I saw and that, that I'm seeing actually. And I'm like, wow, this is really, really funny. That is some shit. And my final thing that I want to talk about before I get to the main topic is Michael Jackson. Holy shit. My God. Michael Jackson, the documentary, um, Leaving Neverland or something like that. Man, listen. That documentary did not prove a goddamn thing. That documentary did not show anything new. That documentary was full of shit. Straight up. Full of shit. N nothing new I learned from it. No they didn't show shit. They did not show anything. All they showed was a couple of old interviews, a couple of new ones, some old ass allegations. Mind you, some of the people that they were interviewing, they're the ones that actually went to court and said, no, he never touched me. I don't even know why I'm here. He never did anything. And mind you, the FBI, the FBI, a, a entity built, an entity that is 
built to bring down black people, Latin people, an entity that was basically stemmed from racism. If you guys don't know, look at the history of J. Edgar Hoover when he actually founded the FBI. This dude was wow racist. He was bringing down the Black Panther Party and all these other people just because they were black and they, and they were basically a threat to national security. That's exactly what he said. What he said. That was out of his own mouth. But an institution, an entity to bring, that be framing people who make a Pro and all this other bullshit did not find nothing from those five, 10 years that they were investigating Michael Jackson? What? I don't know. But all I know is if the FBI didn't find shit, then guess what? You ain't do shit. I'm not gonna listen to no documentary. I'm not gonna listen to no interview. I'm not gonna listen to anybody that's changing their mind when they actually had the chance to go to court and actually say what happened. I'm not gonna ch listen to none of those people. What I'm gonna listen to is the people that were designed a institution that was designed to bring you down that said uh yeah we we didn't find shit nope no nah, he's clean no no he good no no he's good I, I we didn't find shit you know what i'm saying that's who i'm gonna listen to i'm not gonna listen to hbo doing that documentary i'm not gonna listen to somebody that's bitter because they're not getting paid anymore from the estate what what happened i'm not gonna listen to that i'm gonna listen to an institution that's built that has basically had an investigation on you for uh, for years, like almost damn near almost a decade. No, yeah, I'm gonna listen to them. Yeah, if they didn't find shit or they couldn't plan shit on you, then no, I'm good. I'm pretty, yeah, no, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty content with what I know. You ain't do shit. I, you ain't do shit. You good. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? The shit is crazy. The shit is crazy. But. That, that's what happens when, you know, when you live in the system of white supremacy. You feel what I'm saying? That's what happens. Because everything has to be weaponized. You know, everything has to be weaponized, weaponized, weaponized. Everything we do, everything we see, everything we hear has to be weaponized. It has to be weaponized. And let me give you guys an example. Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry wasn't really popping before the whole Medea movies. For, for those who don't know, Tyler Perry wasn't really popping. He has some really conscious, uh, you know, movies that he brought out. Nobody, nobody went to go see that shit. You know what I'm saying? Nobody really went to go see it. When he started putting on a dress and started talking all that crazy shit, that's when, you know, we're like, oh shit, okay, what is this? I want to check this out. You know what I'm saying? That's when it started to pop off. You know what I'm saying? But that's by design. That's by design. What did Nilly Fuller say? White supremacy affects nine areas of activity between people. Entertainment is one of them. Entertainment. That revolves around music, movies, TV, magazines, any anything that entertains you. YouTube videos, podcasts, you know what I'm saying? Anything that entertains you. Why? Because it's supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be designed that way. It's des it is designed that way. You feel what I'm saying? So that that's why this, this documentary came out. First of all, this documentary didn't just come out of nowhere. All right. It takes years for a documentary to actually happen. You know what I mean? It takes years for a documentary to actually happen and be put out and all this other stuff. It takes years. If you guys ever even talk to somebody that's actually making a documentary, it takes years and a lot of time. Some of these people even, you know, don't even see their families for like months on end. Just when they're working on one documentary, you know what I'm saying? So they plan this shit out. They plan this shit out. You know what I'm saying? Like the R. Kelly documentary comes out and then now this. Yeah, come on. Let's come on. Let's just keep it real. They plan this shit out. You know what I'm saying? Now to the main topic. To the main topic, do Latin people deserve reparations? Wow. Do Latin people deserve reparations? Now, some of you guys might be even thinking, why is that even a question? Now, there's a reason why I even titled this episode that because reparations is becoming 
a topic of discussion right now. And they're talking about American descendants of slavery. And they're talking about reparations. And I have no goddamn idea why in the fuck Latin people are getting lumped into that conversation. I have no idea why. I know why, because it's being you Latin people are being used as pawns and it's being used as a tactic to basically have a trickle down effect and black people get nothing. You feel what I'm saying? But it's being we're, we're being used as pawns. Let's let's keep it real. That's why that's why Latin people are getting even lumped into this conversation. So I'm gonna explain. Should we even get reparations or deserve to get? Actually, you know what? Let me just give you guys a short answer. Hell no, we don't deserve reparations. Point blank, period. We Latin people do not deserve reparations. The fact that it's even coming up is so disrespectful that I'm even making an episode about this, okay? It's extremely disrespectful. And it's extremely disrespectful to the people who built this country, black black Americans. And it's extremely disrespectful to their legacy. The only people that deserve reparations from America is black Americans, descendants of slaves. Not immigrants. Not um anybody else who didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? No, none of them. Black Americans, black descendants of slaves, Latin people. The only thing that we need to do is rally around black people, boost their numbers up with our numbers to help them get reparations. Okay, Latin people, we gotta step back and not do shit. Point blank, period. The only thing we gotta do is support them with our, our numbers. Yeah, that's it. Over. That's the short answer. The reason why this is even bringing up to um into the main topic of why Latin people are being brought up. Check this out. So the you know the presidential candidates are coming out, you know, they're talking and all this other stuff. And you know, Bernie Sanders has been dodging the questions about reparations. Same thing with Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, and all these other people. But this is one person, AOC, uh, Alexandra. Um, Alexandra Costa Costa Cortez or Costa Cortez or whatever. I'm gonna just call her AOC. First of all, I like a I like her. I, li- I like Alexandra. I-, I like her. She's mad cool. Like you know, I-, I believe everything that she talks about. But just like everybody, I don't agree with a lot of her views. This is what she said about reparations. Economically speaking, when we talk about the issue of, say, reparations, mm. people think, you know, people people think about rep- reparations as reparations for slavery. Mm. But really, economically speaking, reparations are for the damage done by the New Deal and redlining, mm-hmm. because that is where we saw a, a compounding, mm. a compounding of the existing inequity from the legacy of slavery, mm. where we drew red lines around black communities and we said white communities will get home loans and they'll get access to the basic bedrock of of wealth in America and this is the thing that you will be able this will be your heirloom and we gave white America an heirloom that appreciated over time that people still uh, benefit from today and we did not give that to African American Mexican communities Puerto Rican communities okay so I'm going to stop it right there. You guys could hear the rest, you know, look it up on YouTube. Now, she said a lot of truths, but also everything that she said is misguided. Okay. There's a lot of truth to that. Yes. You know, there are descendants of slaves here, but there's a lot of non-descendants of slaves here who are Latin people who don't deserve reparations thing is listen to the words that she used reparations but there's ways to do it economically speaking blah 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 redlining all this other stuff blah 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 you know what i'm saying yes that she's from that part of redlining and the white economic wealth being you know up uplifted and all this absolutely true 100 percent true but the fact that she you know, crowbarred Latin people into that conversation, misguided as all hell. I disagree with her, 
I disagree with, uh, with how she approached it, and I disagree with how she said it. That's extremely disrespectful. And mind you, black people voted for her. You feel what I'm saying? Black people voted for her. Yes, yeah, she's being lauded as the radical left wing, uh, you know, congresswoman. But mind you, talk about reparations. Yeah, she's cool with that, but she's bogarting a lot of bullshit into it. And she's basically saying everything that all these other politicians are saying as well. Latin people do not deserve reparations. What Latin people need to do is rally around black people to boost their numbers up and for them to get reparations and for us not to get a goddamn dime. That's what Latin people need to do. Why? Because we owe black people everything. What do we owe black people? Okay. What? Well, first of all, they built this country. All right. They built this country because of system white supremacy. Our Latin people are allowed to maintain this country the way it is because of systematic white supremacy. How? Because of immigration and all this other stuff. They just, you know, they let a, a, a majority in and then they'll, they'll have to pretend to do their job and all this other bullshit to, you know, deport everybody else. But anyway, the point is they built this country, right? Because of, they built this country, we weren't even able to even come in here in the 60s. The floodgates were open. Immigrants were allowed to get come here to undercut the black family. A lot of people don't know that. Latin people were used to undercut the black family. And then on the same time, the civil rights movement popped off. So all the Latin people that were here before the 60s, that actually were here and had to suffer for all the injustices that they were actually doing, they wasn't seeing themselves. There was some Latin people out there doing their thing like the young lords you know what i'm saying there was some latin people doing their thing but the majority of latin people they they just stood in the sidelines that's when we became professional piggybackers because what out of that civil rights movement all the benefits that black people were supposed to get exclusively for them they rewarded that and then we got that too we got some of that benefits you know what I'm saying? It got just handed out to everybody. You feel what I'm saying? So now Latin people are supposed to get that. So Latin people weren't getting there. The majority of us wasn't getting our brains bashed in. The majority of us weren't getting dog sick on us and all that. You feel what I'm saying? Black people was. So we just piggybacked off of that. And now we're saying, yeah, we, we, we did it with you guys. You know what I'm saying? When we really didn't. So black people really never got something ex specifically for them they didn't really got nothing that was tangible from this country out of their struggle but just a bunch of hoses and rock while sick on them you know what i mean so what latin people need to do since we've got all this help from the black struggle we need to repay them back by boosting their numbers up and rally around them for them to exclusively get reparations. That's what we need to do. That's basically what we need to do. Hands down, point blank period. You feel what I'm saying? And the fact that our, that we're, we, we're just being crowbarred into this whole conversation is extremely disrespectful. We shouldn't even be part of the conversation at all. If you guys are talking about having black and Latin people some rights about you know redlining all right cool you know all this other stuff all right cool but don't put that under reparations don't put that under some systematic you know um band-aid from a big um you know years of uh, of a wound that we didn't even suffer from and only uh, uh only black people did don't put that on don't put that on uh, on that you know what i'm saying don't put that on us and all that nah no, 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 no. Exclusively. Black people need exclusively. They need to get reparations. If Latin people want reparations, what we need to do is go back to our country or have our country fight for reparations from Spain or have America help us out from Spain and get money from them. Just like America helped our Jewish people to get money from Germany. You know what I'm saying? Latin people, all right, America, you want to help us out? First of all, get black people some reparations. All right, we want reparations too? All right, cool, guess what? Help us out, go to Spain, talk to them, let them do whatever they got to do, and I want my check. 
You feel what I'm saying? I want my check. You know what I mean? But that's what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Remember, if you guys want to hit me up, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Radical underscore Latino underscore. And I'm going to catch you guys next week.